Hello, everyone. Welcome to this foundational document overview video for Federalist 51. That's the Federalist Papers number 51, subject matter of which is all about separation of powers and checks and balances. If I had to pick out one word of all of that that describes the Constitution best, what the Federalists were arguing is that it's all about balance. This Constitution, the Federalists were arguing, was a good idea because far more than the Articles of Confederation, this was a system that could be powerful while maintaining balance. So let's dive right in and understand the Federalists, more particularly James Madison's argument for why that was. Now we know that James Madison is arguing here for the adoption of the Constitution, but his argument has maintained, uh, it, it's, it's lasted over the years because he makes an argument that's bigger than just the Constitution. It's about human nature. This is why Federalist 51 is so important to our country. And he, he starts off with one of these very memorable phrases. James Madison says, if men were angels, no government would be necessary. James Madison argues that just having government or that we feel we need to have government is proof that what's really going on here is that you and I generally share an assumption that most people are not fundamentally good. And this is an important consideration because on the one hand, it causes us to realize, yes, this is why we believe in government and need government. But on the other hand, James Madison says, the only problem is that, that we're not going to find angels to magically run our government. So the same men that government is trying to control are also the people that are going to be running the government. And this presents some real real questions as to what the government should look like. James Madison presents a logical argument, if A, then B, and then if B, C, et cetera. And it starts something like this. He says, people, especially people who want power, tend to be bad. Think about it. If we're saying that the average person is bad, how much more is the average person who wants power and control likely to be bad? Maybe you don't even have to think about the average person, but think about the worst case scenario. Chances are some people in this country are going to want power and they're going to want power to benefit themselves. And this is a concern. As a result of A, James Madison says B, the Constitution is set up so that leaders do not need self-control, leaders need ambition. Let's talk about that word ambition. Ambition is the, the strong desire to do something. Maybe we would translate ambition today as a competitiveness. That's the idea that, that James Madison is getting at. He says, the Constitution doesn't require perfectly humble, self-controlled leaders. It requires maybe people like you that are competitive. Now, why is this so much better? Well, systems like a monarchy or a dictatorship require the leader to have self-control because they can do anything and there's no one to stop them. And James Madison is pointing out subtly that throughout history, we've learned we can't rely on the self-control of leaders, but we can rely on their ambition. And the Constitution uses the competitive nature of, of mankind, the ambitious nature of mankind against itself to limit the government. And he provides two specific examples of this in Federalist 51. The first is the bicameral legislature. He says, in a republic, the legislative branch is going to be the most powerful part of the government. After all, they make the laws. So the Constitution, what does it do? It takes the legislature and cuts it in half. And it calls one of them the upper chamber, right, the Senate, and one of them the lower chamber, the House. So the Senate, they think they're all high, high and mighty. And the lower chamber, the House, they think they're, you know, scrappy and representing the people. The result is that where we would be worried about the exercise of legislative power, making laws to the dismay of the people, instead you have these two competitive halves that clash like, like toothpaste and orange juice. That's how the Senate and the House are designed to be. And that's what James Madison says is so good about the legislative branch in the Constitution. Again, we call that two-part legislature the bicameral legislature. But he gives another example. It's not only within branches, it's also between branches. He gives the example of the veto and override process. 
We know if both houses of Congress pass a bill, it becomes a law. And then we know that the president can veto that law. And then we know that Congress can override that veto with a two thirds vote. And so what is the point? James Madison makes the point that if the legislative branch and the executive branch were always working together, we should be afraid of that, right? That would be a threat to our liberties. That would be a very powerful, almost unlimited government. And so what does the constitution do? The constitution sets up on the one hand, this incredibly hard, arduous, long process by which a bill becomes a law. And on the other hand, in the executive branch, they can make it evaporate in an instant. The result is that the president and Congress are almost guaranteed to clash. There are many other example, examples of this. We've talked about, for instance, how the president has a commander in chief power, but Congress declares war. But the one James Madison goes to is that veto and override example, cementing that the president and the Congress will essentially be um, clashing with each other very frequently. Now, these are two specific examples of constitutional features that James Madison mentions. However, he, he pivots at that point to talk about three broader principles, three bigger ideas throughout the Constitution that have this same essence. It takes advantage of mankind's competitiveness and ambition. The first is separation of powers. James Madison rightly notes that separation of powers is not a new idea. Um, in, in France, the, the Baron de Montesquieu had famously saw these three types of government authority, legislative and executive and judicial, in England's system. So, so the idea of separation of powers was not new, but James Madison reiterates that it's an important one, that you don't want one part of the government that it can ex exercise the power to make laws, the power to enforce laws, and the power to interpret the laws. You want to split up those three functions into three different parts, the legislative, executive, and judicial uh, branches. Not a new idea, but one James Madison says is important. The idea that's a little bit newer, that, that James Madison says the Constitution is, is really one of the first or best examples of, is the idea of checks and balances, which is the idea that not only did we separate power into three branches, but each of these branches clash with each other. This is what the bicameral legislature is um, when, when, for instance, if the Senate doesn't want to pass a bill, the House can't do it on its own. Or if, say, the president wants to veto a law, then the legislative branch needs two thirds to override it. These are examples of checks and balances, not only dividing up the power, but ensuring that each branch has some power to limit the other two. And we've gone through those branches now at this point, or you will throughout this year, and you should make sure you understand not only what branches do, does each have individually, but what power Powers does each branch have to check the others? This is what causes our government to be balanced. And then James Madison says, look even bigger. We're not in our country just talking about a government. We're talking about levels of government. This is why the Federalists were called the Federalists, because they said the Constitution sets up a system of federalism. And James Madison says that this is a double security. The idea that we have separation of powers and checks and balances and we have it at two separate levels. Think about it. He, he references factions again here. If a faction gets control of, let's say, the governorship of a state, the executive branch of a state, there's still five other main parts of our government that they don't have control over. And so federalism takes separation of powers and checks and balances and doubles them at various levels. And this, James Madison says, ensures that our Constitution is balanced. This is far better, he says, than the Articles of Confederation, which doesn't have such a robust system of federalism, separation of powers, or checks and balances, and as a result, was essentially to be deemed a failure. So thank you for tuning in. I hope this has helped you with Federalist 51. Best of luck. Have a great day.